about forests is you kind of know it, know one when you see one. However, um, that is, uh, there's still, it's still helpful to have a formal definition of what they, what they are. Um, they occur across the world. This one's uh, a photograph from Portugal. Um, and like I say, their ecosystems are dominated by trees, uh, long-lived woody plants that create um, most multi-strata ecosystems. And, and let's just confront the first problem with that, which is what about shrublands? You know, shrublands, uh, many shrub species can be long-lived. Um, they can even create uh, sort of um, uh, multi-layered canopy structure and that's an area where uh, that's a that's a point where this is just kind of a vague definition um, and uh, prob and and there's really not much that I can say that's gonna that's gonna help with that there is overlap between what we would consider uh, the ecology of shrublands and the ecology of forests although basically what we were doing here to kind of keep us all on the same page is we're talking about these these uh, relatively large statured systems and their specific dynamics. Of course, these kinds of ecosystems, they have forests, they have a lot of biomass and they have a lot of biomass in wood. That is, uh, that creates their structure, affects a lot of their ecology and also influences their economic importance. Wood is just a very flexible, um, material in terms of what you can do with it. You can make paper out of it. You can uh, use it to build structures. Um, that's, that's just the, you know, just the, the wood itself. Forests more broadly do have many other roles that are of value to society, such as sequestering atmospheric carbon and provisioning water as well as um, uh, harboring wildlife, and, uh, providing habitat for wildlife. Create, they are the basis for wildlife habitat. Um, other ecosystems do that as well. But forests, like I say, are a little bit different. Um, you kind of know forests when you see them. They have this um, essential structure. This is a photograph from uh, Sonoma Mountain. Um, and I'm showing this uh, for two couple reasons. Um, uh, it's, it's a it's a good example of uh, what we confront a lot of times in California, which is heterogeneity in ecosystems. Um, and particularly in places like California, that heterogeneity can be uh, really dramatic. What you're seeing in this photograph is some areas that I think each of you would recognize initially as being forest, uh, but then a lot of other <coughs> kinds of uh, ecosystems here that uh, seem that I think that you would just simply say those are not forests those are grasslands and uh, if you look close you can see some shrublands as, as well um, the uh, we have this problem here um, that we have these very uh, problem or sometimes it um, or it's just part of our ecosystems we have a lot of uh, that uh, heterogeneity and it changes over a very small distance sometimes Within the forest, however, though, there is this overlapping, multiple overlapping canopy layers. And you can kind of see it somewhat in this photograph. Um, you can actually see it better in the image that's behind me here. And I'll, I'll point out this a little bit in a second. But the other thing I want to, um, oh, oh yeah. The thing I want to do first is give us a little basis for what I want to talk about today. And um, this, is, this is the summary of uh, everything that I'm, that we're gonna talk about in terms of the, the most important, the, the main point. The main point that I wanna convince you about today is that um, we can describe the patterns of forest occurrence as well as the variation of forest structure or forest composition. That is to say, the kind of forest that we see across the entire earth based on uh, two, two kinds of interactions. The first is the interaction of precipitation and temperature. How much water and what, um, you know, a rel what is the relative temperature in which it is delivered to the ecosystem? The second is the amount of water and its interaction with its timing. Both of those interactions are, create most of the variation in forest structure that we see across the entire world. So 
let's just, um, like I say, this is the summary of, of this entire lecture right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you examples of these for us, but this is, this is the main point. In areas that are extremely dry, uh, when you reach critical, uh, um, you, you have to have a critical uh, amount of precipitation for ecosystems to be dominated by trees. Trees need water. It takes water in a relatively large amount compared to other plants um, in order to create this structure, to create all this biomass and to maintain it. So there are kind of critical levels of mean annual precipitation where we transition from something that is clearly not a forest, such as a grassland, into area something that we would recognize as a forest. The, um, the, the point, the conditions that is, are, like I said, this first interaction that I want to highlight is the effect of temperature. If it's too cold, uh, trees just simply cannot survive there. So um, the first job that I got uh, when I was done with my undergraduate was to go up to Alaska. I got to spend the summer up on the, on the um, north slope of uh, Alaska. That's in the tundra. It's north of the Brooks Range. And uh, that is a treeless ecosystem. Um, it's, uh, it's not to say that it's, uh, it's, a, it's, relative, it's a cold environment, right? For most of the year, it's a cold environment. And then for about 60 days, 45 days in the summer, it's either kind of a cool, wet environment or just like a really hot, humid place. You wouldn't quite expect that maybe in a tundra, but it could be really dang hot up there. I mean, like, you know, like 90 degrees and really humid, like really oppressive. Um, but that period is really, really short. And what that, and, and, and conversely, uh, or the other side of the coin here is that during the winter, it is extremely cold. I wasn't actually there for that, but I knew, I know that it happens. It was very cold and it's so cold that trees simply cannot persist there. They won't occur because they can't survive. Okay. So like I say, those two kinds of interactions, precipitation and temperature are going to influence a lot of the broad, um, classifications of forests that we're going to look at. Now, the timing of precipitation is also very important, or excuse me, the, uh, yes, the timing of precipitation is very important, as well as um, the, the basically the, well, this is saying the same thing, the patterns of precipitation during the year influences whether you're going to have a forest or not, as well as what kind of forest you're going to have. And the other exam, uh, the way that I've, uh, um, I'm uh, uh, trying to demonstrate this here is with this um, description of forest types or ecosystem types on the Indian subcontinent. Um, essentially, if you have a lot, what this is showing, at least in the Indian subcontinent, if you have a lot of precipitation and it's generally wet all year, you're likely to have tropical rainforest. That's, or at least there's tropical rainforest on the subcontinent and its, and its distribution is limited um, by those two things, or its, deter its distribution is determined by those two things. Likewise, you can move your way down this graph and you can see how forest type changes to things like semi-evergreen tropical rainforest, uh, these monsoon forests, which are kind of specific to that part of the world, and then tr gradually transitioning out of things that you might recognize forests into savannas, mixed grasslands, and and um, trees and then into deserts, things that are certainly not dominated by trees. Ecosystems are not dominated by trees. 